Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Willis, and you will love economics. We all live in an open global economy. This means that nations freely engage in trade and exchange goods, services, resources, technology, and capital with each other all over the world. The benefits of trade are numerous. It promotes stronger diplomatic relations, as nations that trade with each other rarely go to war and have a mutual interest to see each other thrive. It also increases the standard of living in nations around the world, as trade leads to greater real GDP output per capita, greater production possibilities, and an increased capacity to produce in the long run. Free trade also promotes allocative and productive efficiency. With trade, countries that have a lower opportunity cost to produce certain economic goods can specialize in their production and trade with other nations that specialize in other goods, leading to a reduced waste of scarce resources. It also allows a greater variety of economic goods to enter countries everywhere around the world, which leads to greater consumer choice. With more goods and services to choose from, Consumers have a greater chance to maximize their utility and satisfy all of their needs and wants. To enjoy the benefits of trade, however, a nation must first freely engage in trade. And in reality, not every nation is open to trading with its neighbors. This means that economies around the world can either be open or closed economies. A closed economy is an aggregate economy that does not engage in trade with foreign partners and uses protectionist measures to keep goods, resources, and financial investment from coming in or leaving its borders. But with all the benefits of trade, why would a country choose to close itself off from the open global economy? Well, some countries choose not to trade because of political and ideological differences. For example, North Korea is the most closed economy in the world. Due to ideological stubbornness, it chooses only to trade in large part with China, and the rest of the world has cut off trade with the communist nation as punishment for international misbehavior. While the North Korean regime appears to be sticking it to the world in the eyes of its people, its people also can't see it at night because the North Korean electrical grid is almost non-existent. The average North Korean also finds it harder to meet their utility because of a lack of basic necessities. Countries may also choose to close themselves off from international trade in order to support domestic producers. Without trade, there's no foreign competition for domestic firms, and so, they're insured to control all the markets in the domestic economy. This may ensure profits, but it also leads to less consumer choice, lower consumer utility, and a reduced standard of living. An open economy is an aggregate economy that engages in free trade with foreign partners and allows the free flow of goods, resources, and financial investment in and out of its borders. An open economy enjoys all the benefits of free trade. For domestic consumers, the free flow of foreign goods into the economy means economic goods are not only more plentiful, but they are also less expensive as well. For example, suppose that this graph represents the domestic economy of country X. The supply curve represents the various quantities of real GDP output that domestic firms are willing and able to produce at various price levels. The demand curve represents the various quantities of real GDP output that domestic consumers are willing and able to purchase at various price levels. If country X is a closed economy, domestic consumers would rely entirely on domestic firms to produce economic goods. And so, consumers would have to pay the domestic price set in the aggregate economy to purchase the goods and services they need and want. However, if country X becomes an open economy and engages in free trade with foreign trade partners, it would allow international goods and services to flow into their economy, making them accessible to domestic consumers. If foreign countries sold their products at a lower world price, imported goods and services would be cheaper than domestic products. As a result, domestic consumers would become more willing or more able to purchase greater quantities of economic goods and would therefore demand more. However, domestic firms would be less willing and less able to produce goods and services at this lower price and would therefore supply less. Ultimately, at a world price of PW, domestic firms in country X would be unwilling or unable to produce the quantity of economic goods demanded by domestic consumers resulting in a GDP shortage at a price of PW. But, because country X is an open economy, it can import real GDP output in the size of the shortage at the world price 
to meet domestic consumer demand and meet the needs and wants of its citizens. Free trade at a world price that is lower than domestic price may benefit domestic consumers, but it hurts domestic producers. As consumers increase their consumption of cheaper imported products, they decrease their consumption of domestic goods and services, which ultimately shrinks profits for domestic firms. They simply can't compete with cheaper foreign competition. However, there's something that can be done to help domestic producers by reducing foreign competition and boosting profits in the marketplace. The government can use protectionist measures to close the economy off from trade. Protectionism includes measures like quotas and tariffs. Quotas are strict limits on the quantity of imported goods and services that can enter the domestic economy. Tariffs are taxes that are levied on imported goods and services that are intended to make them more expensive. For example, if country X is an open economy, consumers can purchase imported goods and services at the world price, which is cheaper than the domestic price. At the world price, domestic firms just aren't willing and able to supply the quantity of economic goods that domestic consumers want and need. And so, domestic consumers turn to foreign producers. This hurts domestic producers by reducing their profits. However, government can place a tariff on imports that drives their prices closer to the domestic price, which also increases the quantity of real GDP output that domestic firms are willing and able to produce. Ultimately, as imported products become more expensive, domestic consumers will reduce their consumption of imported goods and services and begin to buy from domestic firms again. By imposing this tariff on imported products, Country X has partially closed itself off to international trade. It's still an open economy because it's still importing goods and services. It's just not as open as it used to be because it's artificially raised import prices by levying a tariff. Ultimately, what are the effects of this tariff? Well, it benefits domestic firms as they boost their production and earn greater profits at a new, higher tariff price. It also increases the country's net export balance by decreasing imports compared to exports. However, domestic consumers are hurt by the tariff because, as imported goods and services become more expensive, their purchasing power is diminished and they'll find it harder to satisfy their utility. When an open economy engages in trade, it exchanges so much more than just goods and services. Trade partners will exchange labor, financial and physical capital, natural resources, technologies, and even disposable income. Open economies that trade will keep a record of any and all economic transactions between itself and its trade partners. This record is known as a country's balance of payments, and a country's balance of payments is divided into two accounts, the current and capital accounts. A nation's current account balance is made up of three components, net exports, net investments, and net transfers. To be included in the nation's current account balance, a trade transaction must be categorized into one of these three components. Net exports are classified as the difference in the value of all exported goods and services sold and all imported goods and services purchased, including labor. In the end, exports sold to trade partners count as a positive in a nation's current account balance, and imports purchased from a trade partner count as a negative in a nation's current account balance. Net investments are classified as any interest, dividends, or earnings from financial investments paid to or from domestic investors. In the end, when interest, dividends, and earnings are paid to domestic investors from foreign countries, it counts as a positive in a nation's current account balance. When the domestic economy pays interest, dividends, and earnings to foreign investors, it counts as a negative in a nation's current account balance. Net transfers are classified as any aid or grants paid to or from the domestic economy. This includes international aid or the transfer of income. In the end, when the domestic economy receives any aid or income transfers from foreign countries, it counts as a positive in a nation's current account balance. When the domestic economy sends out any aid or income transfers to foreign countries, it counts as a negative in a nation's current account balance. A nation's capital account balance is made up of two components, financial investments and real investments. To be included in a nation's capital account balance, a trade transaction must be categorized into one of these two components. Financial investments are classified as the purchase of foreign and domestic financial assets. Assets can include stocks, bonds, or any other interest-bearing accounts. The purchase of these assets represents the flow of financial capital between open economies, 
And all economies that trade want capital to flow into their economy, not out. Capital inflow means an economy has more reserves in its banking system, which will stimulate spending and growth. Capital outflow means an economy has fewer reserves available in its banking system, which will make spending more difficult and will lead to contraction. As a result, the purchase of domestic assets by foreign investors generates capital inflow and counts as a positive in a nation's capital account balance. The purchase of foreign assets by domestic investors generates capital outflow and counts as a negative in a nation's capital account balance. Real investments are classified as the purchase of foreign and domestic land and businesses, including plant capacities and factories. We're literally talking about the purchase of land and the acquisition of businesses. Russia sells Alaska to the United States, real investment. Hershey's buys Cadbury, real investment. In the end, the purchase of domestic land and businesses by foreign countries counts as a positive in a nation's capital account balance. The domestic purchase of foreign land and businesses counts as a negative in a nation's capital account balance. After recording its trade transactions, a nation will want to determine whether its exports are greater than its imports or if its imports are greater than its exports. This is known as a nation's trade balance. When the sum of a nation's current and capital accounts is a negative, the nation is importing more than it is exporting and therefore is experiencing a trade deficit. When the sum of a nation's current and capital accounts is positive, the nation is exporting more than it is importing, and therefore is experiencing a trade surplus. The key to trade balance accounting is the flow of money. To correctly determine an open economy's trade balance, always follow the money. When a transaction is made that causes money to flow into the domestic economy from foreign nations, it counts as a positive and moves the trade balance towards a surplus. When a transaction is made that causes money to flow out of the domestic economy and toward foreign nations, it counts as a negative and moves the trade balance towards a deficit. For example, when an exported good is purchased, a foreign consumer is paying a domestic firm, meaning money is flowing into the domestic economy. This is a positive under net exports and it moves the current account balance towards a surplus. When an imported good is purchased, a domestic consumer is paying a foreign firm, meaning money is flowing out of the domestic economy. This is a negative under net exports and it moves the current account towards a deficit. When a domestic investor earns interest on a foreign asset, a foreign entity is paying a domestic investor, meaning money is flowing into the domestic economy. This is a positive under net investments and it moves the current account towards a surplus. When a foreign investor earns interest on a domestic asset, a domestic entity is paying a foreign investor, meaning money is flowing out of the domestic economy. This is a negative under net investments and it moves the current account towards a deficit. When the domestic economy receives aid from a foreign country, money is flowing into the domestic economy from a foreign trade partner. This is a positive under net transfers and it moves the current account towards a surplus. When the domestic economy sends aid to a foreign country, Money is flowing out of the domestic economy and into a foreign trade partner. This is a negative under net transfers and it moves the current account towards a deficit. When a domestic interest bearing asset is purchased by a foreign investor, the foreign investor is depositing financial capital into domestic banks, meaning money is flowing into the domestic economy. This is a positive under financial investments and it moves the capital account towards a surplus. When a foreign interest bearing asset is purchased by a domestic investor, the domestic investor is depositing financial capital into foreign banks, meaning money is flowing out of the domestic economy. This is a negative under financial investments and it moves the capital account towards a deficit. When domestic land or businesses are purchased by a foreign entity, the foreign entity has to pay domestic entities to complete the purchase, meaning money is flowing into the domestic economy. This is a positive under real investments and it moves the capital account towards a surplus. When foreign land or businesses are purchased by a domestic entity, the domestic entity has to pay foreign entities to complete the purchase, meaning money is flowing out of the domestic economy. This is a negative under real investments and it moves the capital account towards a deficit. In each of these transactions, money either flowed into or out of the domestic economy. Always follow the money and it'll tell you whether the transaction counts as a positive or a negative 
towards a country's trade balance. And that's balance of payments. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting the red button below so you can receive alerts about new videos when they become available. If you enjoy the channel or find my videos useful, let me know by liking the video and feel free to leave a comment below. We have full video lectures on every topic in macro and microeconomics, as well as quick macro and micro minute videos for cram sessions and quick reviews. If you'd like to learn more, you can click here for my video on the foreign exchange market, or you can click here for my macro minute video on current versus capital accounts. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on You Will Love Economics.